Okay. Uh, any last minute questions about particle statics or anything for the test? Um, all right. So now we're going on to statics of rigid bodies. And the thing that we're adding with rigid bodies is now objects that we look at. Uh, we're not assuming they occur just at a point. They have length dimension. Um, so objects have length dimension. Um, which means that we're going to be dealing with the changes of orientations of objects. Um, and uh, the location where forces are applied matters. So, um, like, for example, uh, so imagine that there's like a car on the ice, on like an ice rink. <laughs> nice car. Okay, so you're looking from above or below, hopefully not below. Um, so if you apply a force of 50,000 newtons here on the car, its behavior is going to be different than if you have the same car Am I really going to draw all this stuff again? Yes. Then the same car, but 50,000 newtons is applied right there. Right? The, that first one is going to make it spin counterclockwise. Uh, the second one is, you know, going to keep the same orientation. Um, it turns out that the acceleration of the center of mass is going to be the same in both cases because of Newton's second law, but this one's going to spin and this one isn't. Um, and the way that that comes into calculations is calculating the moments produced by a force. So now we're going to introduce the idea of a moment that I'm going to introduce it even though you've talked about it more than you'd care to already. But um, so. People just call it a moment, but I want you to remember that what we call a moment is the moment of a force. So the force that's causing it matters, and it's also about a point. So if you change the about point or change the force, the moment is different. And the definition of the moment of a force about a point MA um, is a vector rho crossed with a vector F. And I'll tell you what these mean. Um, where rho is a vector to the location of force application, where the force is applied. And from the about point A. Okay, so um, 
if you have, so this is your object, is some random shaped object. Say that this is your about point. That's what you're calculating the moment about. And this is the point P where the force is applied. Then the row vector is the vector that goes from here to here. Um, you calculate the moment as, well, so what, what does this tell us right off the bat? It tells us that if any force is applied at the about point, you don't get any moment produced by it, no matter what the force is. And uh, you probably have experience with that from when you're trying to, you know, like turn a stuck bolt or something by whacking the bolt with a hammer. You know, no matter how hard you hit it, it just won't turn. Well, now you know. Don't try that anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Think of how many, uh, how many bolts you could have saved. Yeah, it's better to press on this part of a wrench, just for future reference. Yeah, torque is another word for it. Um, in engineering, I don't know if this is a universal thing, but pretty often torque refers to um, the twisting of a shaft, like, um, So when people use the word torque, even though like mathematically they mean the same thing, people tend to use the word torque when they're talking about something like this that you're doing to, you know, like a long, thin member. So you tend to hear the word moment for, for this thing. Um, okay, something to remember. The moment is calculated as a cross product. Uh, so what type of object, mathematical object, is the output of a cross product? A vector, yep. So a moment is always a vector. That fact can be obscured because we do so many 2D problems. Um, in 2D, um, the moment only has a non-zero Z component. And so you start thinking about it as a scalar because you only have one component to deal with. But it, it really is a vector. It only has one non-zero component. In 3D, it has three non-zero components. Um, and to calculate the moment, um, I'm going to suggest that you use this table idea. I think it's going to make your bookkeeping a lot easier. Um, so. This is what I call the pancake table. Um, and uh, I don't know, like, I'm sure there's a million better mnemonic devices, but the one I use for this is pancake artists row for marzipan. Marzipan is like that that candy stuff that you that they make fancy like cake frosting out of like so anyways this is the mnemonic device and it helps you set up a table like this so the P, the P for pancake is the point where the force is applied the A for artists is the about point rho is the Greek letter rho that's a tricky one and then F is the force and then marzipan is the moment about A. 
And there you go, a table. Um, okay, so this P is the point, the, like the coordinates of the location where the force is applied. A is the about point. Rho is, you just subtract these two points, P minus A. F is the force vector. And then the moment is rho cross F. Uh, so yeah, remember that this one is coordinates and the about point is also coordinates. I'll do a couple examples, show how to use this. Um, so the first one, say that you have an object like this that's two meters long. and one meter high. Uh, let's say the origin is right in the middle. And let's say that the about point that we want to use is over here where so it's one meter horizontally from the edge and right in line with the, the top of that shape. And let's say that the force being applied is right at this corner, 20,000 newtons. And we want to know What's the, okay, so this is the about point A out here. We want to know what's the moment about A produced by that 20,000 Newton force. Okay, so set up the table, pancake, artists, row, four, marzipan. Oh, okay, so you need a little backstory on this pancake artist. I mean, otherwise this doesn't make any sense, you know. But this, okay, so he makes really fancy pancakes. They have this special kind of frosting on them, you know. Most pancake artists don't put frosting on, I know, but he does. And he lives like on an island, so when he runs out of marzipan, he has to row his boat across to the city, you know. Now it makes sense. Okay. So, all right, so uh, what are the coordinates of the point where the force is applied? It's, here's the origin, so yep. 1, negative 0.5. What are the coordinates of the about point? So one to get here, another one to get here, so 2 and then positive 0.5. Right? I've been wrong before. Uh, and then to calculate rho, now you just take p minus a. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 0.5 minus 0.5 is negative 1.
Um, and actually, since this is, I'm not always going to keep doing this, but um, just to be clear on the vector nature of all these, let's make these all three-dimensional vectors for now, even though it's a two-dimensional problem. So we'll just make all the z components zero. But we know that the moment is going to come out with only a z component. What's the force vector? Yep, 0, 20,000, 0. And to take the cross product of this, it's easy in 2D. You just take negative 1 times 20,000 minus negative 1 times 0. And that's going to give you the z component. So we have 0, 0, negative 20,000. Any questions about that? Okay, let's do a three-dimensional example. So let's say that this plate is, you know, like connected to the wall by hinges over here. And it's supported by a cable that goes from the center up to a point on the wall. just right above the hinge over on the corner. Um, and let's say that this uh, plate is a square with length of two meters. And let's say that this height is one meter. Um, and let's say that we've done uh, enough analysis to know that, so we're given that the tension in the cable is uh, 10,000 newtons. What's the moment um, the cable applies to the object, the plate? About the point A. So let's say this is A, and let's also put the origin here. Um, so let's say the x-axis is this way, the y-axis is up, and then who can tell me which direction the z-axis has to go if that's x and y? Uh, it has to go, yeah, right, that way. Uh, no, the opposite of what you said. It has to go... Um, so x cross y has to be z, so it has to go across this way. All right, so 
um, we have to figure out what the force vector is. We know the magnitude of it. How are we going to figure out the force vector applied by the cable? Yeah, well, you know, in 3D, finding the angle is really a nightmare. Like, you could do it that way. But let's just do it. We can come up with coordinates of this point and this point. So let's subtract those, figure out a unit vector in that direction, and then multiply that to 10,000. Okay. Basically, in any 3D problem, that's the way you probably want to go because um, if you have angles going on in two different dimensions, things get really complicated. So... Um, What's the force vector applied by the cable? Um, so the unit vector, well, first, if we're going to come up with a vector u that's in the direction of the force vector, we know that the force vector is going to be pointing in the direction from here up to there. So. Uh, what are the coordinates of this attachment point? That would be negative 1x, positive 1y, and 0z. Oh, no, it would also be uh, positive 1z, right? Yep. So uh, negative 1, positive 1, positive 1. And then the point, no, not yet. It's not. Um, and now uh, the other end of the vector is at A, the origin. So that's minus zeros. Um, the length of that vector is, you know, negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared square root. So it's the square root of 3. Um, and so now the unit vector is 1 over root 3 times negative 1, 1, 1. And that gives you negative 0.577, positive 0.577, positive 0.577. Any questions about that part, just finding that unit vector? That's something that you should you know, get comfortable with for the test tomorrow. Um, and so then finally the force vector is the magnitude, you know, the, the magnitude of the force, 10,000 newtons, times that unit vector, so you get 5,777, that's negative, then positive 5,777, positive 5,777. The extra, oh yeah, well it just, it's repeating sevens, so. Um, okay, so that's the four. So now we're going to go on to filling out that table. Pancake, artists, row, four, marzipan. If you come up with a better mnemonic, let me know. I'm always looking for an upgrade. Okay, so um, what is what are the coordinates of the point where the force is applied? Uh, 
Oh, we don't want to put A here. Let's put A somewhere else. We're going to get zeros if we put A there. No, that, that's not good. That's not a good example. Okay, so let's put A here. Why not? It's not going to change the force vector because um, that didn't... We're not changing where the origin is. We're just changing the point that we're calculating the moment about. In, well, in statics, it doesn't matter where we put it. For dynamics, yeah, the hinge would, would be a better choice. But for dynamics, I mean, for statics, we can put it anywhere because every point is fixed. Um, and mathematically, you can calculate a moment about any point. It's just that Newton's laws get more, cal more complicated if you don't choose one of those special points. Um, OK, so what are the coordinates of the point where the force is applied? Well, the force is applied at the origin. So p is just equal to zeros. Do you see that? So we just have the origin here. Yeah. And what are the coordinates of the about point? So 1, and then 0, y, and then negative 1, z. To get rho, subtract these two, so you get negative 1, 0, positive 1. The force vector is negative 5, 7, 7, 7, positive 5, 7, 7, 7, positive 5, 7, 7, 7. And so the cross product now um, You can just do it on your calculator or um, think about it this way. So the x component is minus 5, 7, 7, 7. The y component is, yeah, minus 5, 7, 7, 7, plus 5, 7, 7, 7. And the z component is minus 5, 7, 7, 7. So the moment is negative 5, 7, 7, 7, 0, negative 5, 7, 7, 7. And what are the units? SI units for moments are Newton meters. And by the way, um, maybe you've noticed before that that's the definition of a joule. But when you're talking about moments and torque, we don't call it a joule. We call it a Newton meter just so because even though it has the same units as energy, it's not energy. So you don't want to get those confused. Um, so not joules. <laughs> Any questions? Yep. On the test when you're doing like unit vectors and dot products, do you want to see how that works? No. You can just do it on the calculator. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping you're going to do. <laughs> um, all right. So, what are moments good for?
so far it's just this mathematical thing. Um, But it turns out that as a consequence of Newton's second law, there's a rotational version of Newton's second law um, where basically you replace everything in Newton's second law with a rotational analog of that thing. Um, so I suppose uh, it would be called the rotational uh, Newtonian equation of motion. I'm always just going to call it RN2L for like rotational Newton second law. And it just says add up all the moments acting on a body, on a chosen object. That has to be equal to the moment of inertia about that same point times the angular acceleration. And this only applies if A is either, I mentioned this once before, uh, if A is either fixed in an inertial reference frame, inertial coordinate system, or um, the object center of mass. In statics, it's easier. And the reason it's easier is that since the thing isn't moving, or, um, or if it's moving with a constant velocity, um, every point is fixed in some inertial coordinate system. So every point on the body is fixed in an inertial coordinate system. So in statics, RN2L just looks like add up all the moments on a body. They have to add up to a zero vector. Um, one thing you do have to be careful about is um, you don't get to choose that about point separately for each force that you're dealing with on the body. If you could do that, you could always make the sum of the moments zero. Um, so you get to choose whatever point you want, but then you have to keep that same point for every force that you're dealing with on the body. So uh, notice... Once you choose the about point A for the body, you have to use that A as the about point for every force. Um, in a rigid body problem, um, if it's a two-dimensional problem, so in 2D, you have three total equations. So 
where do those equations come from? Um, you have two equations from Newton's second law, because that's a vector equation. And then you have one useful equation for RN2L. Uh, that's because only the Z component is non-zero. The other two just say zero equals zero. doesn't help you at all. Um, so one from RN2L. If you're doing a 3D uh, rigid body problem, you have a total of six equations. And that's three from Newton's second law and three from the rotational equation. Um, I guess let's stop there and uh, we'll do a couple examples next time and I'll talk about so um, one thing that you know I tried to stress is like when I was introducing moments is that about point is a key thing right if you change the about point you change the value um, you change the value of the moment so you always have to be aware what that about point is there's one special case where a moment does not depend on the about point. Um, and does anyone know when that is? Like, I don't know if this is something that comes up in physics one. Does anyone, does that ring a bell at all? Okay. Well, now you get to think about it all weekend. <laughs> so, um, test tomorrow, and then it's actually. So what it is, it's called a couple. And it's any time you, you have two forces that have the same magnitude in opposite directions, um, it's a pure moment that has the same value no matter what you choose as your about point. It's sort of an odd thing. And um, I'll go through a derivation of why that is. Um, it's just sort of cool how it works out. Uh, OK. Uh, so, in any like any kind of cantilevered thing, um, mathematically you treat it like there's a couple there. I, I think the easiest way to think about it is like a screwdriver. Like if you think of, or maybe even better than that, have you ever seen those kind of, they're essentially like screwdrivers, but they have two little prongs. You put them in two little holes. And when you turn it, so when you twist this thing, it applies a force this way on one and an equal and opposite force this way on the other one. And it has the effect of being a pure rotation on this thing. It's not accelerating the center of mass up or down or side to side. It's just rotating this thing. So I'll talk about that on Monday. <laughs>